And when we got underway at half past 11 this morning, much anticipation. Some of the car parks here at this venue fit to bursting. And uh, the revolutionary way of arriving was by jet. And a number of people doing that at the last possible moment. A few cars leaving the track, crucially at the time for Luca Giotto, who would be given a penalty for shortcutting and gaining advantage, turns one and two. Then a spin for Tony Wells, he was helped into that, I think by the Richard Mill TDS car, which subsequently would be assessed a penalty as well. Almost walking pace for those in the LMGT3 category. And that's how, uh, that's how Sarah Bovey fell behind Duncan Cameron. They were trying to get around Tony Wells, who was half blocking the track, not through his fault. Sarah, though, was then able to uh, pick off D uh, Duncan Cameron down the Mistral. This was a terrific overtake by Johnny Edgar, who has limited experience, if not at all, around the Le Castellet circuit. But that's a tried and tested way of overtaking. Then a spin for Niels Coolen in the Duquesne team car. How about this? Leapfrogging, winning the long jump record in an LMP2 car for Jonas Reed. He was actively also given a penalty for supposedly taking an advantage. I know what race direction mean but he was still probably picking his teeth up off the footwell after that hard hit. Nose to tail as they headed across the start, finished straight between Paul Lafargue and the car diving down the inside, the cool racing machine of uh, Fluxa. And Renzo Fluxa with a tidy manoeuvre. Then our elbows out, as it can so often be in LMP3. Uh, Matthew Bell down the inside of Torsten Kratz. Kratz then got him on the exit of Bose. Uh, with a little bit of a rub to boot, and then Matt Bell uh, scraping the side of the 59 Aston Martin at senior corner of all places. The Ferraris were neck and neck, Charlie Tamani in the Zebra liveried a, of course, a 51, getting ahead of Johnny Lawson, who struggled in the second phase of his opening stint. A tidy overtake on Johnny Edgar from Luca Giotto to take the race lead in 34 into Europol competition over AO. Then the unconventional run down the Mistral straight from Hiroshi Hamaguchi, hitting one, twice, and then three times the curve to his right. He did eventually make it work, though, as the two Japanese drivers went door handle to door handle, and the green and black Iron Lynx Lamborghini getting ahead of the car guy Ferrari from Kessel Racing. And then more action, a spin for Julian Gerby helped into that at turn five. The bollard, which I think we lost on the first lap, actually, still lying there in the distance. And a nice little spin turn from Julian Gerby to get back into the race in car number eight. Uh, but he was left with one of the rear bullets trailing, and that will surely need a repair at the next pit stop. So... After two hours and 11 minutes of hard-fought action, it is still Rahel Fry now in the Iron Dames Porsche that leads the LMGT3 category from the Iron Lynx, Axel Jeffries Lamborghini. Race leader in LMP3 is the number 12 WTM by Rinaldi Racing Leo Vice driven car. P2 Pro-Am is DKR Engineering Laurence Hoare, the overall leader, Vlad Lomko for Inter-Europol competition. And this is how the overall classification partway through the race looks. 73 laps we've just ticked over. This is at 72, though. Five seconds the advantage for Lomko over Ritoma Miata. Richard de Guiris third for Edex Sports. Oliver Gray for the second into Europol competition car. And then Robert Kubica and Marino Sato. Uh, Pro-Am is led, as I mentioned, by Laurence Hoare. Second in that category, Gregoire Sose for Richard Miel. And in LMP3... WTM by Rinaldi Racing leading ultimate right now. Jean-Baptiste Le Hay in the 35. Adam Ali's just rejoined from a pit stop for Euro International. They're in a very strong position. Iron Dames and Iron Lynx, different manufacturers these, these days, remember. Porsche ahead of Lambo. So it's Rahel Fry 